Peter, you go and you've been in the cars and everything. What's it feel like when you're in one of these cars? So it's pretty much like being in an elevator, <laughs> you know, and I can imagine the first time that a person walked into an automatic elevator, pushed the button and it went up on its own and like, is it going to stop? And then after you've ridden an elevator a few times, you get pretty self-assured that it's going to accelerate yep. and stop at the right time. And the same thing for these cars. It's a little bit strange in the beginning. But after a while, you get used to it. And let me just take a second and rattle off. Once we get to a world in which autonomous cars are the norm, just to take a second at what the benefits are. So first of all, save lives. Clearly, we're going to be saving in the United States those 33,000 lives and a million plus around the world for a lot of the children. The second is you don't need automotive insurance anymore because cars don't crash. The third is an interesting one that people don't think about. In the U.S., we devote 10% of the urban land to parking spaces. In L.A., it's like almost 50% are roads, parking lots, parking spaces, garages, and so forth. There's going to be a massive land dividend mm -hmm. when you don't need that land. Turn it into parks, right? And it turns out that autonomous cars, you can put eight times as many autonomous cars on the road as normal cars because the spacing distance is shorter, and so it's much more efficient packing. 